Well, here we all sit on the last day of 2023. Woo! 364 days have slipped through our fingers. Isn't that amazing to think about that? 364 days. And all of those days are now in the past. That story in our life has already been written, and there is nothing we can do to change those days. That chapter of our life is now coming to a close. And we look back over those days and go, wow, unbelievable that that many days we've walked through. And then we try and peek around the corner. What's going to happen in 2024? What's going to happen? You know, we have no idea. <laughs> we have no idea. We're human beings. We live in time, space, and matter. And because of that reality, the only thing we can see is what's right in front of us. We have no idea what the next minute's going to bring. We have no idea what the next hour, day, week, month, let alone the next year is going to bring. So, as we walk into 24, we walk in with our heads back, shoulders up, because it's a brand new adventure. We have no idea what this adventure is going to be. But we're going to write it out page by page, line by line in all of our lives. And the only way to do that is to trust in the Lord with all your heart, not to lean on your own understanding, and in all your ways acknowledge Him so that He can make our path straight, right? So, as we think about this brand new year, I wanted to take us somewhere in the Bible, one simple place for us to rest in, for us to focus on, that we can tie up our year with and go forward into a new year with wisdom from God that we can put in our pockets and take with us. Are you ready to see what that is this morning? You have your Bibles with you? Hold them up. Repeat after me. This is the Word of God. It's more powerful than a two-edged sword. And I love the Word of God. Amen. Father, we thank you today for your Word. And today as we tie up this year, we're going to just plant ourselves right in your word. Not in politics, not in weather, not in finances, but in the word of God that's living and active and sharper than a two-edged sword, piercing as far as the division of soul and spirit of both joints and marrow, and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. So that's where we sit. That's where we rest today. We love you. We pray this in your powerful name and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Take your Bibles this morning. Open up to the book of 1 Peter. 1 Peter, again, if you're new to navigating in a Bible, there's a table of contents at the beginning. Find that table of contents. Find Old Testament, New Testament. Once you find the New Testament, you'll go toward the end of that, and you'll find 1 Peter, page number 980 in my Bible. I don't know what the number is in yours. If you've got a tablet, it's very easy. You just push it, 1 Peter shows up. And this morning, we're going to take one verse, just one verse, and we're going to soak it in. We're going to chew on this verse. We're going to digest this verse. We're going to unpack this verse and put it in our pockets and take it with us as we get ready to tie up 2023 and step into 2024. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13. Verse 13. I'm going to read it first time. Here we go. Therefore... Gird your minds for action. Keep sober in spirit. Fix your hope completely on the grace to be brought to you 
at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Now we're going to let it soak in. Therefore, gird your minds for action. Keep sober in spirit. Fix your hope completely on the grace to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Okay, are you ready? Therefore, whenever you read the Bible and you read the word therefore, you always want to ask yourself this simple question. What is it there for? Okay? What is it there for? Because therefore, whenever you read the Bible, always refers back to what was just written. Did you catch that? When you read the word therefore, what do you ask yourself? What's it there for? So you have to go back to what was written right before that word, and it will give you some clarity. Well, what is written before this is Peter is writing a letter to Christ followers that are scattered throughout Asia Minor. And this letter is written to them because he wants to encourage them to continue to live out their lives through the grace of God and show people that there is hope in Jesus. That's why he's writing this. Christ followers, he says, all these verses before we get to here are designed to say, hey, Christ followers, I'm going to encourage you, live out your life according to the grace of God so that people around you can see that there is hope in Jesus. Because these Christ followers are living in a culture and time in Asia Minor where they're being harassed about their faith. They're being made fun of because of their morality. They're being laughed at because they love Jesus. <clears throat> so Peter's saying, okay, I know what's going on in your culture. I know the pressure that's being put on you, so I'm going to encourage you to recommit your life, to live it out by the grace of God so that people around you can see that there's hope in Jesus. Therefore, Okay, that's what's, that's what's before we come to this verse. Therefore, gird your minds for action. Gird your minds for action. we got to start with that first word, gird. It's a word you don't hear much in 2023. But in the original language, that word gird means to brace up. To prepare, to brace up, to get ready, because something different is going to happen. Brace up. Don't just sit there. Don't just be lackadaisical. Don't just remain inactive. Gird. Prepare. We might say in today's language, Strap up those boots and get ready to go. Because something's going to happen. Gird. Prepare. Now, we know what that means because it's going to rain for a few days. So what do we do? We gird. And we prepare for the rain. Okay? You want to make sure your gutters are cleaned out, you know, so they don't get all clogged up with stuff and overflow and make a mess. You clean up your deck. Make sure everything's out of the way. The stuff doesn't need to be there so it's not going to get ruined. You put tarps on everything that you don't want to get wet. You gird, you prepare for the rain, right? And if you live up country, you've got to gird or prepare for winter, right? You got to put on snow tires because it's going to snow. You got to make sure that you have enough wood if you have a wood stove, that you're going to stay warm or enough propane so that your heater works. 
You also want to put a blanket or some gloves in your car. Because in case of emergency, what are you going to do? Gird. Prepare, huh? Prepare. That is key. In the world that we live in, in 2023, heading into 2024, it's vital that we as Christ followers prepare, and he says, prepare your minds for action. Now, the reason we prepare is why? So we can avoid as many problems as possible. Because if you don't prepare, you're, doesn't matter. You're going to end up with trouble. So you prepare to avoid as many problems as possible. Gird, prepare your minds for action. Now, kind of get the picture. Back in first century AD, the clothing that people wore back then, as you go back and you see movies or you watch The Chosen, what's the clothing that they wear? It's like these tunics, these long robes, huh, that they would wear with a belt around them. So, when it was time to gird, to prepare, let's say they had to get a job done, or they had to run, or they had to defend themselves, guess what they would do right away? They would gird their tunic. They would gird their robe. They would pick it up, put it in their belt. Why? Why? So they can move, huh? So that you can move better. I mean, if you're going to have to run, do you want something around your legs? No. If you're going to have to defend yourself, do you want it? No. If you're going to have to do a job, do you want something where you can't bend over? No. So get the picture in your mind as Peter's writing. Gird your minds for action. So, Christ's followers... Gird up all those loose things that are in your mind. Gird up all those things that are slowing you down so that you are on your toes. You're ready to go. You're ready to do business. You're ready to run, to walk, to fight, whatever it is. Your mind is being prepared for action. That's important because you know what happens in a lot of people's minds? They veg out on TV. You know, there's so many things. They're watching programs. You go, I can't believe they're watching these programs. It's like, what a waste of time. There's cooking programs. There's fishing programs. There's fix-it programs. There's car programs. There's this, all these programs and people sit there for hours and go, How do you gird your mind for action like that? You don't, huh? And then they go on the computer and they go, oh, and they start surfing the computer. Three hours later, they get themselves back up and they go, wow, that's been three hours. And they did absolutely nothing. Nothing. Because those long flowing robes in their mind are tangling up their mind. There's no way they can do anything. They can't gird their mind for action like that. Or people who just, they just worry. They just worry about all kinds of things. They worry about this. They worry about that. They worry about the sky falling. They worry about the this. They're all worried. It's like, how can you gird your mind for action when there's those flowing robes of worry all around your mind? You can't. Oh, and then there's those people that all they do is they live in the past. Oh, man, this happened. That happened. Oh, my goodness, how bad that is. Well, yeah, yeah, bad. Well, you know, when you live in the past, there's no way you can focus on the future. So, get that picture. Here's what Peter is saying. All right, Christ followers, yes, you may live in a culture that is harassing you, and you are. It's harassing you because you put your faith in Jesus. A culture that's harassing you because of your morality. A, whole, a culture that's laughing at you because of your faith. So, Peter says, as we step out of this year into the next year, gird your mind for action. Woo. Isn't that amazing? We have to prepare. You know, Gail and I 
have taken some defensive handgun courses. And as we have taken these courses, we came across this very interesting chart. It's called Cooper's Color Code of Awareness. Okay? Now, I'll just read it to you. I mean, you can read it. It says, white, relaxed and completely unaware. Yellow, relaxed but aware, minimum acceptable level when in public or carrying a firearm. Orange, potential threat identified, attempt to verify, evade as necessary. And red, threat verified, execute, necessary response. Pretty simple, okay? Here's the key, white. You're completely unaware of what's going on around you. You're relaxed, indifferent. You can relate to this because you might see people that live in the white. I see it all the time. They walk around looking at their phone. They don't know. Some of them have earbuds in. They're completely unaware of everything around them. That's called being in level white. Level yellow, you're alert. You're, you're aware of what's going on. Your head's on a swivel. You're aware of what's going on around. You know the color of the car that just went in front of you. You can tell me that color. You know what the person looks like that's walking towards you. Because you're aware. Most people don't live there. If you ask them what color the car was that just went in front of them, they have no idea. They could not describe a person that walked in front of them because they weren't alert. Or if something causes the hair on the back of your neck to stand up. So you're wondering what I'm going to do next because something is not right. And then red... There's a threat. You better execute something. You better find cover. You better get out of there. You better evade this. Whatever it is. And this color code of awareness is vital as you carry a handgun. But as I was reading through 1 Peter, I said, wait a minute. That's exactly what 1 Peter is saying. He's saying to all the Christ followers, Get out of white. You're living in white. You're just walking around life thinking, oh, everything's fine. Everything's dandy. Nothing's going to happen. You're not aware of anything that's going on around you. Gird your minds for action. You got to get out of that couch potato state where you just walk around. You just, oh, who cares? Who thinks? It doesn't matter. You're in level white. Peter says, stop. you got to get to yellow at least. You've got to be in yellow. That's why I say this morning as Christ followers, we have to gird our mind for action. Quit being lackadaisical. We cannot do that as we walk into this brand new year. We've got to disengage our minds from all the things that would hinder them from action. Does that make sense? Because remember, as I said before, how you think is how you what? Act. Yeah. Act. How you think is how you act. If your mind is not prepared for action, do you think you're going to act prepared for action? Yeah. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And do you think your mind, on its own, girds itself up for action? No. Your mind on its own wants to surf the internet, wants to watch TV for three hours, wants to just daydream. In fact, how many times have you sit and listen to me on a Sunday morning and you find yourself off in Never Never Land somewhere? And then someone says, hey! And you go, what, 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 what? I, 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 was, I was someplace else. Isn't that easy to do? You know why? Because you're in level white. That's where you are. You're sitting in church in level white. You're not even alert and aware of what's going on. You're like thinking about your phone, your dinner, your rent, being about me, about me, your brother, your sister, your car. Your... It's easy to be there. That's why Peter says, 
Christ followers, wait a minute, you live in a culture that's harassing you. You live in a culture that's making fun of you. You live in a culture that's saying, you don't need to trust in Jesus. You better gird your mind for action. Because if you don't, you're going to end up in trouble. Got to get out of that plight. Gird your mind for action. Prepare yourself. Prepare your life, maybe to be in the minority. As you walk into 2024, prepare yourself to be in the minority. Because the majority is going to go in the wrong direction. Wherever you see culture going, good choice. Go the opposite direction. Huh. If culture's going this way, you go, ah, I'm going that way. You know what that's going to mean? You're going to be in the minority, Charlotte. Franco, you're going to be in the minority. You've got to prepare yourself to be in the minority. You may need also to prepare yourself to stand alone. You may have to stand alone this next year. All by your Self. Oh, nobody wants to stand alone. Oh, but remember what Joshua said? As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We're going to stand alone. I don't care what you're going to do. I don't care where culture goes. I don't care where the majority says you need to do this, have that, take that. You need to gird your mind for action and prepare yourself to be in the minority. Prepare yourself to stand alone. You need to be prepared for another lockdown that's going to tell you, you know what, you can't go anymore. You have to stay at home and you can't go to church. Prepare yourself for that. What are you going to do? Oh, I better go along with the majority. I do better. Wait, 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 wait. Gird your mind for action. Gird your mind for action. Be prepared. Think. Oh, there's going to come another vaccine, another magic pill that's going to save you from some boogeyman out there. What are you going to do? Oh, I'm just gonna, the majority says, i got to go with the majority. Think. That's what Peter's saying to these Christ followers. You have to think. Gird your mind for action. Be prepared. Be alert. What is going on? Now, I have to ask yourself a question, a simple question. How do you gird your mind for action? What's the one thing that will gird your mind for action? Somebody tell me. The Word. The Word. The Word of God. This is it. It's the Word. The Word. I was talking to a friend the other day. He'd come over, we we're playing pickleball, and he saw my car. He goes, Oh man, such a nice car, so, so cool, baby, about it, baby, about it. Okay. Now, he he's struggling a little bit in his spiritual life. So I said, Well, think about this. See that nice car? I said, there's only one thing that that car needs to make it run. He said, Oh, an engine. I go, No, no, not, not the engine. A driver? No, it's not the driver. The wheels? No, it's not the wheels. The tires? No. There's only one thing. I said, I can be the driver and the car can have an engine, and it's still not going to go. There's only one thing that it needs, and what is it? Gas. Gas. It's got to have gas. As a Christ follower, you can come to church, you can sing praise songs, you can go to the New Year's Eve party, you can watch a movie, you can go to Bible study, you can do all those things. But without the Word of God getting off the page and into your life, you have no gasoline. That's why so many Christ followers struggle in their life. Because, hey, they'll do all this other stuff, but they won't do this. You've got to have gasoline. So the only way that we're going to gird our minds and be ready for 2024 is through the Word of God. Amen. Read it. Study it. Memorize it. Get it off the page and into your life. That will make a huge difference. 
That's what Peter's putting on the table for all of these Christ followers. Soak that in. But he doesn't stop there. He says, not only gird your mind for action, but he says what? Keep sober in spirit. What's the opposite of sober? Drunk. Inebriated. <laughs> you know, when, when you're sober, you can see things clearly. Huh? You can make rational decisions. You see reality. You understand what's in front of you. But when you're not sober, when you're inebriated in any way, drunk in any way, your response then is out of balance. It's out of balance. No matter how think you think you're thinking straight, you're not. You're inebriated. You're drunk. You are not yourself. You are in a non-sober state. And in a non-sober state, can you gird your mind for action? No. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. You're unable to handle the reality of life, the messiness that comes along with it, the frustration, the disappointment. What's happening with you and around you? Because when you're inebriated in mind, you're not thinking straight, are you? And who cares about what God thinks when you're inebriated? Not too many people. I mean, there's a lot of people that are wandering around life and culture in an inebriated state of mind. They're not alert. They're not aware. They're kind of out of it in how they're thinking. And you know, when you have a non-sober, inebriated state of mind, you can't see what's happening around you in culture. You can't see it. You can't see what's right and what's wrong. Because when you're inebriated, you think that what's wrong is right and what's right is wrong when you're inebriated. When you're drunk, when you're not sober, when you're not sober in your mind, you think that it's okay to kill babies. You go, yeah, that's my right, it's my body, my right. I can kill a baby anytime I want inside of me, even when it comes out. That's what happens when you're inebriated in the mind, when you're drunk in the mind. You can't think straight. That's why people in this culture today say, hey, it's okay to mutilate children to tell them that they're the wrong sex and have sexual problems and then castrate them and do these crazy things, that's okay. You go, no, that's not okay. Can't you see it? And they go, no. I think I should do that with my children. When you're inebriated, when you're drunk, you cannot see straight. That's what the Bible says. Christ followers, keep sober in spirit. Keep sober. Hey. When you're inebriated, you can't see what's going on in our country. You go, hey, this battle for leadership, it's no big deal. You know that this battle for leadership wants to make people in this country slaves? No more freedom. Absolutely none. You will be totally controlled. But that's okay. Because we like that. We want the government to take care of us. People can't see. They're inebriated. That's what they that's how they think. They can't see that when the world stands up against Israel, what's going on? Remember, the Bible says, he who blesses Israel will be blessed, and he who curses Israel will be cursed. And people go, no, get rid of Israel. Kick them out, get them out of there. Palestine, Palestinian freedom all the way. You go, wait, what? What? They can't see. You know why? Because their minds are inebriated. No wonder. They can't see this slip in morality. I watched a report the other day about a college president in a college at the University of Wisconsin who was making porn with his wife and putting them on the internet. And they fired him. And he's like, what? Whoa, boy, you can't do that. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? You know why people can't see that that's wrong? Because they're inebriated. Their mind is drunk. 
They are not sober in spirit. That's what the Bible says, you and I. If you're going to be, if you're going to make it in 2024, you better keep sober in spirit. Sober. That is so important. Get out of that intoxicated mindset. You and I as Christ followers cannot be there. We have to disengage from the foolishness around us. There's so much foolishness we get involved in. Disengage from it. Study the word, read the word, memorize the word, listen to the word. That's the only thing that's going to make a difference in you and me as we walk into one of the most interesting times in history as we walk into 2024. Amen. So, gird your mind for action. Prepare. Get it ready. Keep sober in spirit. But you know what else you better do? Fix your hope on the grace to be brought to you at the revelation. Fix your hope. What are you hoping in? Well, I hope President Trump gets to be president. You put your hope in President Trump, you are going to lose. He is not the answer. Oh, I put my hope in Joe Biden or maybe Gavin Newsom who will take his place. You put your hope there, you are going to lose. Oh, I put my hope in the United Nations. They're going to take care of this whole situation. You put your hope there, you're headed for trouble. Oh, I'm going to put my hope in my money. You put your hope there, the banks are going to collapse and you're in trouble. Oh, I put my hope in cryptocurrency. Oh, yeah, you watch how the regulations come on that. Oh, I put my hope in silver or gold. You went to the governor, calls it in, and says, you know what, it's illegal to have silver or gold. You wait. Where's your hope? Where's your hope? Christ. Peter says, hey, Christ followers, culture's pressing in on you. They're making fun of you. They're laughing at your faith and your morality. You better make sure that your mind is ready for action. You better keep sober. You better make sure you're alert to all that's going on. And you better fix your hope. What are you hoping in? Jesus. Fix your hope on the grace to be brought to you. Grace. Woo! It's vital to be reminded of God's grace, isn't it? Without his grace, we don't have anything. We didn't earn anything. We don't deserve anything. I don't care what color your skin is. I don't care how old you are, how rich you are, what kind of car you drive. You don't deserve anything, but it's God's grace. This year, we had better fix our hope in the right place. The grace that will be brought to you. You know, it wasn't that long ago, Gail and I completed a very important project in our house. We tore down our deck and we rebuilt it together. Woo! That was a tough job. I knew it was going to be tough when I first started. I knew that it was going to be hard work. But halfway through, I'm going, I didn't know it was going to be this bad. <laughs> Three quarters of the way when my arms are tired, my hands are tired of daily, my knees are raw from bending over, I'm at the point of going, you know what? I'm done. I'm done. Somebody else has got to fix this job. I'm, so, I'm too tired to do this. And it's at that point you better fix your hope on the reason. Why did you start this, Kim? Why did you start this job? Don't forget that. You did it because you know that this debt needed to be redone, that you're going to make it stronger and better. You know that you're going to save yourself money. You know that you can do the job better than a carpenter. A contractor can do that. So don't forget that. Don't sit back and go, somebody else can do it. Fix your hope on the complete project. That's what Peter's saying. These people, these Christ followers, they were ready to give up. They're being harassed. People are giving them a hard time because they won't do this and they won't go there and they won't say this and they won't stand up for this. And Peter says, don't give up. Don't give up. Fix your hope, Christ followers, completely on the grace to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Peter says, don't forget why you 
are a child of the king. Don't forget why you are walking in the life that you are living for Jesus. Don't forget what it's going to be like on that day when you see Jesus. When you enter heaven, don't forget when you smell glory, when you hear peace, when you taste relief. Don't forget when you experience life that's more real than anything you've experienced now. Fix your hope on the grace to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Don't forget, I know it could be hard. You might be feeling like, oh man, this is tough living for Jesus. It's hard. This is, uh, how can I do this? Let somebody else finish the job. Let somebody else finish the race. I'm done. Ah, stop! Fix your hope. Completely on the grace to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. One of the verses we're going to be memorizing this next year says this. When Christ, who is our life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. Woo! Thank you, Jesus, huh? Thank you, Jesus. Fix your hope completely on the grace to be brought to you. Now, I don't know where you are in life. I don't know what's going on with you today, what your attitude is about life, about marriage, about children, about job, about finances. I don't know what's hard for you, but no matter what it is, maybe today's the day for you and I to listen to what Peter says and say, you know what? The whole reason Peter is writing this is to remind Christ's followers to recommit themselves to living out their life of grace so that people can see that there's hope in Jesus. Maybe that's a good idea for us. As we finish up 2023 and get ready to step into 2024, that we should recommit ourselves and say, you know what, God? I, I got to recommit myself in my marriage. I'm not going to give up. I'm going to recommit myself in my neighborhood to be light and soul. I'm going to recommit myself in my job to be the man that makes a difference for you. I'm going to recommit myself in my family to let them know that there is hope in Jesus. I'm going to recommit myself to you so that if I have to stand in the minority this year, that I'm ready to do that. That if I have to stand alone, I'm willing to do that. Who cares about what culture says? Who cares? Because as for me, I'm going to serve the Lord. That's why Peter is writing this. That's why I think it's good for us. Kim, gird your mind for action. I better be ready. Keep sober in spirit, man. I'm better. I'm alert. What's going on? Where's What's happening? And you know where my hope is? In Jesus. In Jesus. I know I'm 24 hours closer today than I was yesterday. Every day. Every day I say, you know what, God? Today's the day you're going to call me home. I know this for sure. For me to live is Christ, but to die is gain. I don't know what 2024 is going to bring. Health, sickness, happiness, sadness. Could be the year I take my last breath. Could be the year you take your last breath. Or we can live on. We don't know. But Christ followers, gird your mind for action. Be prepared. Keep sober. And let's all keep our eyes up. Fixing our hope on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Because who knows? Today, the trumpet of God may sound. The voice of the archangel will sound. 
And that then Christ will rise first, because we were alive in the ring, and we got up forever to meet the Lord in the air. Forever we're going to be with him. Amen? Amen. Awesome. Or, 2024 comes in just like Dick Clark used to say. You know, <laughs> <laughs> 2024, yeah. Okay? Could be 24 comes in. Maybe things are smooth. Maybe things are rough. We don't know. But if our minds are good for action, it won't matter because we're ready. If we're sober in spirit, it doesn't matter because we're keeping our eyes on Jesus. That's where our hope is. That makes sense? Yeah. That's why I want to encourage you today. Hold on. Take that verse. Don't just let it go in one ear and out the other today and go, oh, that's a good sermon. <laughs> Get it off the page. Memorize that today. It's easy. Gird your mind for action. Keep sober in spirit. Fix your hope completely on the grace to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Let that sink down in. And I got confidence. I got confidence in Jesus and I have confidence in you. If you hold on to Jesus, there's nothing you gotta worry about. The Bible says this, do not be afraid of sudden fear, nor the onslaught of the wicked when it comes. For the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being caught. Amen, huh? Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for our day today. We thank you for your love for us. Lord Jesus, we look forward to that day that you're going to call us home. We look forward to that day when you say, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the rest that I prepared for you. When we smell eternity. When we taste peace. When we understand what it really means to bow before the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. That's our hope. All of us in this room who love Jesus, we know that this world is not our home. We're strangers, we're aliens, we're passing through. But while we are here, we're going to occupy. We're going to make a difference. We're going to stand strong in the Lord and strengthen with his might. We're going to be light and salt. We're going to stand up for righteousness and truth. And know that you're coming to take us home one day. We love you. Pray this in your powerful name. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 You guys have a great and powerful New Year's Eve.